We're gonna start off with our breathing ball, just taking in a few good deep breaths. That's always a good, good way to start the day. Let's go ahead and breathe in. One more. Okay, now we're ready to do some good listening. I wanted to read to you guys a story called The Quiet Place. This is a story written by Sarah Stewart and pictures by David Small. The Quiet Place. Now remember, the illustrator's job is to tell the stories with the pictures. So take a look there. Are you guys noticing? You see somebody with some suitcases and boxes and they look pretty sad. I don't think they're going on a vacation. I think somebody's moving. Let's find out. The quiet place. Hmm. Think about how she might be feeling if she's having to move to a new place. Looks like maybe her mom is trying to give her some comfort. This story is written in letters going back and forth. Um, and so they also have dates on them. And um, this was, uh, the year is 1957. Now, if we're thinking about how long ago that was, I'm gonna count by tens and I'm gonna do my skip counting. So 1957, so 67, 77, 87, 97, seven, 17, plus three more. So that was about 63 years ago. That's a long time ago. So this is way before I was even born, way before your parents were born for sure. Maybe around the time your grandparents were born. So maybe there's some things that maybe they've told you some stories that you're like, oh, that might've been like what it was like when they were little. So let's jump in. April 5th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, here is my first letter in English. I'm going to practice my new language by writing to you. Thank you for your letter in Spanish. It is so easy to read. I remember most of the English words you taught me, but there are many more to learn. The first day, as we crossed the border, the guard said, Your smile is my antidote to a bad morning. I said, Muchas gracias. Thank you. And then I asked Javo about antidote. He knew, of course, it means a cure. I'm already missing you. Right back soon, Isabel. So it looks like they're going, coming up from Mexico and they're coming into the United States. April 9th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, I forgot to tell you something. I heard Spanish being spoken in a cafe where we stopped on the second day of our long drive north. Then, the best part after lunch, when we drove through many, many, many blue flowers, the very next day, the sky became the same blue. Chavo said, we left a sea of blue at our feet and entered an ocean of blue over our heads. I want to talk like that. Missing you, Isabel. P.S. I'm using my best words and Chavo's dictionary helps with the new ones. Mm, think about uh, what, what she's looking at right there. April 14th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, we have only been in our new home for 10 days, but most of the boxes are unpacked. I like having our old things around me. Snow came down all night and made my whole world new. This morning, everything was white. I ran outside and made a snow angel. Do you remember the one we saw in the book at the library last year? Mother says it is a funny time of year for snow and it will all melt by tomorrow. Where will the snow angel go? Missing you, Isabel. Think about where you think that snow angel might go. Oh, now we've got some different things happening here. And there, in that bright spot, remember the, the illustrators, right? Using those lighter colors, those that brightness, to draw your eyes right to there. It's pretty small, but you can see that snow angel she made. Hmm, looking inside something. 
April 27, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, I am sorry not to have written sooner. I started school two days after the snowstorm. My teacher is smart, like you. I think she loves teaching like you, too. She does not speak Spanish, but she smiles at me. I am still too shy to make friends. But I have started something. A quiet place for me and my books. uh, Father bought a big refrigerator for us and gave me the box. Now I am writing from inside it. Chavo cut a door in it for me. He is the best big brother a girl could have. Missing you, Isabel. Mmm. Hmm. Looks pretty yummy. Oh, she's down here under the table working on something. She looks a little sad. May 4th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, writing these letters is still hard work, but Chavo says it is good work. The spots on this letter are from my tears. A big storm blew across Lake Michigan yesterday. I had left my box outside and the rain ruined it. So many new things are in my life. Not just new words, but new people and new places. I loved how safe I felt in that box. Mother is letting me write this letter under the kitchen table. It isn't the same. Missing you, Isabel. May 18th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, I am sorry if I made you sad with my last letter. This will be a happy one. Mother has started cooking for birthday parties, just like she did in Mexico. She took me with her today. The mother of the birthday girl came into the kitchen and offered me a party favor. I asked for the biggest birthday box instead. We have brought it home, and Father and Chavo are helping me make a new quiet place. Missing you, Isabel. Dear Auntie Lupita, oh, I'm sorry, June 2nd, 1957. Speaking Spanish at home feels safe, but speaking English in class still feels scary. Chavo says that two languages are better than one. He's going to take a course at the college this summer. My classes are almost over. Mother and I are baking cakes for parties. I'm getting good at beating egg whites and chopping nuts. Are you ready for a new word from me? Mother says I am trustworthy. I have helped at last uh, at the last two parties. There have been no big boxes. Maybe my next letter will bring good news. Missing you, Isabel. June 16, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, I do have good news. No new words, but a new box. And it's a big one. Yesterday, the birthday girl was given a giant plastic pool. The box she opened was big, but not nearly as big as the pool after it was filled with air. She invited me to come out of the kitchen and splash around with everyone else. I just watched because I was wearing my dress. Then mother helped me carry the box to our car and I smiled all the way home. Missing you, Isabel. Hmm, looks like all kinds of new boxes there. And she's busy at work. Ooh, doing some origami. Origami's always fun. She's quite creative, isn't she? July 7th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, I am writing this letter from inside my quiet place. July 4th was very noisy, but the pretty fireworks were like big flowers over the lake. It was just like being back home with you. At a party last week, a girl my age was given a dollhouse and many pieces of furniture for it. Everything came in a box that is now a part of my quiet place. There are many rooms. Today, Chavo said, the colors in your house make me want to dance. Missing you, Isabel. Mm, She's doing some more work. August 1st, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, 
We will mail photos of my quiet place very soon. Chavo is reading the newspaper to Father while I am working on this letter. Father says that the English words are easy to understand when people talk at work, but reading is harder for him. When I get your letter every week, the Spanish words are like friends. I'm learning to speak better every day, but I am getting nervous about school starting again next month. Writing to you is easier than speaking to all the new people in my life. That is because I know you love me. Missing you, Isabel. August 4th, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, something big happened yesterday. For the first time, there was a birthday party in our neighborhood. After it was over, everyone clapped for us. The mother of the birthday girl said that we had the uh, we had made the best party ever because of the amazing chocolate cake. I also sang a birthday song from Mexico in Spanish. But there is no but there is more. Before we left, mother invited all the families to our house for my birthday. I asked them to bring me their favorite words as gifts. Missing you, Isabel. What an interesting request. That sounds like a really good party uh, party gift. August 31st, 1957. Dear Auntie Lupita, everyone came. Everyone. The words I liked best were sunrise, nightingale, twilight, and lullaby. But the one I like to say out loud is sycamore. Mother made tamales and salsa and guacamole and beans with rice and a chocolate cake. Chavo played his guitar and father showed the other parents some dance steps. I taught my guests our, our birthday song. We all sang out the windows. My quiet place was not quiet, but it didn't matter. No one wanted to go home. I hope you can feel my happiness. There is no word big enough. Wishing you were here, Isabel. Now, I'm going to show you something really fun on this page. So it opens up, and you can see inside. Look at all of those boxes. And everybody is playing. They're all playing together. Boy, pretty amazing. I'm going to show you all of those again. So maybe while you are at home, you might decide to get super creative and maybe make some cool places out of boxes. And then, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed this story, and it would be really fun to see some of your creations that you make using boxes if you uh, decide to take up that challenge. Maybe you're not going to make something big like a big playhouse, but maybe you might decide to take some cereal boxes and toilet paper rolls and some paper towel rolls and build something like a, a robot or a, a, I don't know, a monster or an animal or maybe a jewelry box anything you want. You remember, you're going to use your imagination. Have fun. And if you do make something, have your parents take a picture of it and then send it to me. I can't wait to see your creations. Have a great time. Bye-bye.